Good day! Here are the top stories of the Manila Times for Thursday, December 16, 2021. DOH reports to Omicron cases. The Department of Health reported two cases of the Omicron COVID-19 variant on Wednesday, the country's first. The cases were detected in the 48 samples sequenced by the Philippine Nome Center on Tuesday. One of the two Omicron cases is a returning Filipino from Japan who arrived on December 1 via Philippine Airlines flight PR0427, while the second is a Nigerian who arrived via Oman Airlines flight WY843. The Filipino sample was collected on December 5 and tested positive on December 7, while the Nigerian sample was collected on December 6 and the results were released a day later. Omicron or B.1.1529 has been considered as a variant of concern by the World Health Organization or WHO. It was first reported on November 29 and has been detected in more than 70 countries. New variants spread unprecedented, says WHO. The World Health Organization or WHO warned Tuesday, Wednesday in Manila that Omicron was spreading at an unprecedented rate and urged countries to act as drug maker Pfizer said its coronavirus pill was effective against the variant. Dutch primary schools will close early as Europe battles a fresh wave of infections and hospital admissions, while British Prime Minister Boris John faced a major parliamentary test seeking to impose fresh COVID curbs. Omicron, first detected by South Africa and reported to the WHO on November 24, has a large number of mutations, setting alarm bells ringing since its discovery. WHO Chief Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus told reporters the strain had been reported in 77 countries and probably spread to most nations undetected at a rate we have not seen with any previous variant. Omicron now accounts for around 3% of cases in the United States, a figure that is expected to rise rapidly as has been seen in other countries. Concepcion said cut booster interval. Presidential advisor for entrepreneurship Jose Maria Joey Concepcion III suggested a shorter interval for COVID-19 booster vaccines amid the threat of the Omicron variant. Concepcion said COVID-19 booster vaccinations will be vital to prevent the spread of the Omicron variant and the country. Earlier, Go Negocio and over 350 companies from the private sector participated in a meeting with officials of AstraZeneca to streamline initial plans to procure COVID-19 vaccines. During the meeting, Concepcion buried that the private sector has been allowed by the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases or IATFEID to procure AstraZeneca jabs. The Go Negotio founder said foresight and a proactive stance led to the decline in cases. Dawn Mass starts Christmas countdown. The Christmas countdown officially began today with the start of the traditional Simbangabi or Dawn Mass. The nine-day Simbangabi starts amid threats of the more transmissible Omicron variant of COVID-19. The Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines or CBCP on Wednesday gave parishes the leeway to determine the number of evening or pre-dawn masses they would hold in a day. The CBCP has allowed churches to celebrate Simbangabi at 6 p.m. starting on December 16 until December 24. The directive strictly prohibits the kissing or touching of images but encourages the faithful to bring an image of the infant Jesus during the pre-dawn masses. Sweden supports Barm Women Empowerment in a Manila Times exclusive, Swedish ambassador to the Philippines Annika Thunberg said Sweden is actively involved in promoting women empowerment and the strengthening of communities in the country. Read the full story on print in its digital edition. Philippines needs to grow 7% in Q4, says Department of Finance. In business, the Philippine economy must accelerate by 7% in the fourth quarter of this year to meet the government's upwardly revised 2021 growth target. This is according to Finance Undersecretary Gil Beltran, who is also the Department of Finance's chief economist. The 24.7% increase in the volume of production index for the manufacturing sector, he noted, is one of the positive growth indicators so far. He also said that a 7% uptick in the gross domestic product or GDP between October and December 2021 is doable. Stephen Curry is NBA's new three-point king. 
Topping sports, Golden State Warriors star Stephen Curry eclipsed Ray Allen's all-time record for NBA three-pointers on Tuesday, Wednesday in Manila on an emotional night at storied Madison Square Garden. Curry, whose remarkable shooting range has revolutionized the NBA in his 13-year tenure, matched Allen's record with his 2,973rd career three-pointers with 1056 remaining in the first quarter with his first shot of the contest. He then missed a chance at breaking the record but with 733 remaining in the opening period, he switched in the number 2,974, letting out a yell as teammates celebrated with him and the New York crowd cheered. Curry exchanged an emotional hug with coach Steve Kerr who corralled the ball used in the record-setting shot. He then embraced his father, former NBA player Del Curry, as well as Allen who was courtside. Two-time MVP Giannis in COVID-19 protocol Giannis Adetokounmpo is the latest NBA star to be sidelined by COVID-19. The league's injury report on Tuesday, Wednesday in Manila, listed the two-time MVP as out for the Milwaukee Bucks game against the Indiana Pacers on Wednesday because he's in the health and safety protocols. Milwaukee's Wesley Matthews and Dante DiVincenzo also have entered the COVID-19 protocols and won't play on Wednesday, Thursday in Manila. The Times editorial focuses on the violent tornadoes that leveled homes in the central United States and displaced thousands of residents and how such an event was a demonstration of things to come. Read the full version on the opinion section or listen to the voice of the Times. Antonio Contreras, Ian Macabenta, and Ed Selagman are the columnists on the front page. Contreras writes about politics performed from a distance by elected representatives who would descend on the people only during election time. Mabenta talks about Russia's decision to veto a UN climate change resolution. Lagman writes about the disqualification petition against presidential aspirant Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. For more news and information, read the Manila Times on print, subscribe to our digital edition, or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and keep up with the Times. This is Christian Cromaghanoy reporting.